This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All righty, let's uh, talk to my man Joe Shad. As always, he's ready to go. He's locked and loaded. You're just thinking about that turkey tomorrow, right? That's all you're doing, right? You don't really care about today. You just keep thinking about that food tomorrow, right? That's what it's all about, right, Joe? Yeah, my wife Betty does a great job. We'll have some uh, turkey, some sweet yams, some string bone, cr- string beaten casserole, uh, <clears throat> some homemade cranberry sauce, some pecan pie. Looking forward to it, man. You got a little cold? No, no, I'm fine. It's a little okay. something on my throat. All right. all right, all right, all right. Good stuff. All right. So, uh, health wise, are we getting anybody back? Because I know, I know, pulling information from Flo is like you know, it's it's like CIA top secret stuff. Uh, but have you been able to gather any information from some of the guys that uh, were on the IR? Any chance any of them return on Sunday? Well, Michael Dieter is coming back now, and that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to start. You know, the Dolphins have used three centers uh, about equally this year, Austin Ryder, Michael Dieter, and uh, Greg Mance. And that certainly is not, you know, ideal. He'd rather have that one center working with Tua Tungavaloa. Uh, Listen, if you can get Dieter back in there, that's probably a slight upgrade over the other two, in my opinion. And there's certainly a comfort level there. Unfortunately, Devontae Parker and Will Fuller are not yet ready to return, according to uh, Brian Flores. So that's certainly disappointing. And then uh, Jamal Perry is out for the year. He's the special teams corner safety, Uh, hence the Dolphins signing uh, safety off another team's roster. And they're going to activate Will uh, Vince Beagle today to replace Brennan Scarlett, who's out at least three games. So, uh, you know, uh, he had that Achilles injury, which is not an easy injury to come come back from. Beagle was not ready at the start of the year, but he's ready now to contribute. I, and I like him as a pass rusher. He definitely can add something because I thought he added a spark a couple of years ago when he was healthy uh, with the pass rush game. So I, I, I like that, actually. I am i can't say I've been that impressed with Brendan Scarlett. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of welcome you know that change right now. Uh, do you see a defense hitting its stride right now? Yeah, I mean, they're definitely playing better. When I think about the Dolphins' defense in that Jets game, you can't help but think about yet another safety sack, yet another safety blitz. Brandon Jones getting it done uh, as the Jets were in the red zone area. Uh, Sack, fumble, recovery by Wilkins. He fumbles, recovered by Javon Holland. Uh, Javon Holland and Brandon Jones give you cause for optimism as two youngsters in the back end. Uh, Andrew Van Ginkle is playing a little better. Uh, Jalen Phillips is starting to show up a little bit more. Christian Wilkins continues to have a good season. Uh, You know, you saw Jerome Baker on the edge, which is interesting. I think he might end up being better suited as an edge player than he is as a middle linebacker. Uh, He just continues to try to improve improve in the area of run defense. But he's just not the biggest guy, and he's just not great at disengaging blocks. Better when he's using his speed and blitzing and chasing guys down and covering. So that's an interesting one to continue to monitor. Uh, Tua, right now, your your thoughts on, on his play overall? You know, he had that one bad interception where it's kind of, I mean, I don't know why he couldn't get it out to, to Jalen Waddle, but he, he didn't get it there. Uh, he had that long touchdown pass to Matt Collins where Tua fans are sensitive to this, but, you know, he took everything he had to get it out there, that 50 yards. Now he does have a finger injury and a rib injury, in my opinion. And, and, those he, are and he wasn't set. He's kind of sideways when he's throwing that ball. You do know that, right? He's not planted and and square to the way you normally would throw a football. So he comes out of that break. Go look at it. He's kind of wide when he throws that. Well, when Tua so, throws so, with, you and, know, and remember, he's not six five. Yeah, I know. So he can't, when he throws with his arm, you know, you know, he has a hard time you know, driving it down the field. It's got to be like a golf swing, you know, or all the parts are working together. But when you're under as much pressure as Tua has been throughout this season, and he was not sacked last game, there was a sack taken away yep. due to penalty, uh, you know, he's got to sort of improvise and be creative and use different arm angles and different platforms and throw when he's not fully set. And Tua did have a couple of nice out route throws, 
He's really good at those. He's really good at those seven to 12 yard outs where Jalen Waddle, for example, is running towards the sideline or a Matt Collins, uh, you know, accurate, accurate on those. Uh, you know, his, his, and his ESPN quarterback rating, the QBR is actually 10th, which, you know, you can find a statistic to tell you anything you want, but it is actually ahead of Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. So he's doing some good things from an efficiency standpoint, driving the ball down the field is still an issue. He's got one completion, one touchdown of 20 yards or more when, uh, Joe, Joe Burrow and Justin Herbert have uh, at least uh, 17 or more touchdown passes of 20 yards or more. Yeah, I know, but they've got they've got a much better offensive line and and all that other stuff. But they probably yeah, but have he's got to take some. Line. They probably have a real offensive line coach and a real he, offensive coordinator. So he's got some of the responsibility. We can't just say that his inability to throw the ball down the field is is purely on the coaches and the offensive line and the receivers. Um. It is. That's no, exactly. it's not fair to say that he oh, does no, not it's, play. It's fair role. to say that the, the line can't block, Joe. He's learned. In fact, one of the things that I've been highlighting over the last couple of days on the show is if you watch him over his calendar year of playing, he has now gotten better at playing under chaos. And he's understanding where he's at. He's got to get rid of the ball quickly. And so he doesn't have, You watch – you watch a uh, Herbert drop back, and dude, there is a, a a a land of space between him and the lineman that he's got plenty of space to to scan and step right into that pocket and make. Yeah, they have an improved offensive one. line, and but a you know what? Herbert got it done last year. Herbert got it done last year behind a poor offensive line. Does does, does he have Keenan Allen? Does he have Mike? Oh Williams my God! Are you really a Tua excuse maker? No, I'm not a Tua excuse maker. I'm a Tua realist, bro. You tell me where Keenan Allen is on this team. You tell me where Mike Williams Devontae is. Devontae Parker, he's hurt. That's the, 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 please don't even don't insult Keenan Allen by mentioning Devontae Parker. When Devontae Keenan Parker Allen is healthy, is there's pro. no, 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 no. When no. Devontae Parker is healthy, there's not much of a difference between he and Keenan Allen. Are you, did you just say that for real? Yeah, but he's, he's never that's healthy, I'm saying, when he's on the field. Joe, Joe that's an all-pro receiver you just insulted. Devontae Parker is a scrub. He's he's a he's a side project. He's a guy that made he had a 1,000 yards receiver receiver two years ago. 1,000 yards receiving isn't anything impressive, Joe. I, it, I don't think you watch Keenan Allen play, my brother. Keenan no, Allen I understand. He's good. Crud. I'm just making the point that Devontae Parker is not what you just said. Devontae Parker fair. is a nothing, bro. He's unreliable. He's a sack of broken bones. You can't even count on Devontae Parker. We can't talk about a guy. So you're worried about Devontae and, Parker's and durability if. and Will Fuller's durability, but you're not worried yeah. about Tua's? I, I, well, no, but I'm saying, but he's playing. The other guys aren't. He play. He plays through rib injuries and a finger injury. Where's Devontae Parker? Where's Will Fuller with his little finger injury? You know what I'm saying? I, at least I give Tua the credit that he's shown me the toughness that he's getting back out there on the field. But the bottom line is Tua doesn't have anything that resembles Keenan Allen on the field. Hell, they don't even have Austin Eckler on the field. Austin Eckler. I don't know, I'm just tired. I don't want the excuses. Listen, he's no, been that's fine. Not, it's not an it's this is a reality, my brother. You can't, you can't. You can't take the facts out and say they're excuses when Keenan Allen alone is better than the entire Miami wide receiving core combined. I mean, come on, dude. And Mike Williams is a big freaking stud. That, so you've you know, already made the conclusion that you would continue to build around Tua next year? Well, if, if you if you decide to build a line, yeah, of course I would. I wouldn't give up on the kid. But if you're going to – if you think putting a, an inexperienced offensive line coach with inexperienced offensive coordinators with an inexperienced offensive line with no running game was going to allow Tua to succeed or any quarterback because, Joe, if you watched it last year, Pat Mahomes got his ass kicked in the Super Bowl because he didn't have an offensive line. And that's Pat Mahomes, who's established all-pro, all-world, best quarterback considered on the planet – and he looked like a fool in the Super Bowl because he didn't have a line. And he has Andy Reid. And he has Ty Tyree Kill. And he has Travis Kelsey. So if I look at a quarterback like Tua who has not nearly the same kind of experience as Mahomes 
or the same kind of abilities, by the way, because Mahomes is kind of freakish. I can't expect the kid to succeed when he has nothing around him that helps him succeed. That's my point. I mean, you don't you don't agree with that? I'm just tired of the excuses, man. Okay. All right. Well, you so you're unwilling to actually open up and and allow that Keenan Allen and Mike Williams could be way better wide receivers. And yeah, then Austin the problem is that this sounds exactly what what I heard when Ryan Tannehill no, no. was the quarterback. It's all, oh, if you only had a better offensive line, if you only had better receivers, if you only had better play calling. By the way, Ryan Tannehill has a fine offensive line right now. He just doesn't have a running game to protect him. But he can't play. If you just give two of the offensive line, he'd be just fine. But Listen, the, the, the I, I, hope that Tua, I hope that Tua is wonderful over the last six games. I hope that he throws for 300 yards – against the NFL's number one pass rated defense on Sunday, the Carolina Panthers. I hope that he does everything you say he will. He's going to elude pressure after pressure from that Carolina Panthers defense, ranked number three in the NFL in sacks. He's going to use his nimbleness, his craftiness, his savvy. You are all in on Tua. You are Tua non. You are the leader. I, I am. I, I'm all in. But uh, is he going to have like a real offensive line so he can do all that, or is he going to do it behind this line? That's the difference. Well, like, I'll tell I just, you what. If he doesn't like, show like, the like, dolphins, like, yeah, but if, he can lift everyone up, then he's not going to be here next year. So he's got Trevor, six games to do it. So then Trevor Lawrence also sucks because he looks like crap in Jacksonville right now. Is it really his fault? Are you blaming Trevor Lawrence? Just wondering, how do you how do you judge that one, Joe? Listen, all these quarterbacks deserve more time than they're being given. No, 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 no. No, listen no, to what no, I said. You, you can't play that game with me. No, they no, deserve no, no. more time. I, I, no, 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 no. There are no excuses, right? There are no excuses. So if Tua sucks, so does Trevor Lawrence, right? I mean, if Tua's not showing me anything, neither, neither is Trevor Lawrence. Orlando, we can't say that Urban Meyer is a joke. We can't say that their team is dysfunctional, but we but we're gonna blame Trevor Lawrence. My point Orlando, is I, the, I wouldn't the, blame Trevor Lawrence. The concern about Tua is threefold. One, durability. Can he stay on the field? Can he stay healthy? Two, yeah. does he have the arm to drive the ball down the field? This is a major concern. Major concern. And three, if his superpowers are supposed to be poise, accuracy, ball placement, he can't be among the league leaders in interception rate, which he is. So, listen, I wanted to be here. I want to be right. I hope I am. Right now, I have some, you know, concerns, and you should too. Uh, yeah, I have concerns if they don't, if you know, if they don't get rid of flow and he can't build an offensive staff around the kid, then the kid's toast. But you know, if if you can't help the kid, he's not going to succeed. That's my problem with that situation. You and I view it a little differently. I view it more that the problem is coaching and the structure around him. I don't believe that he's the problem. Just like I don't believe that Trevor Lawrence's struggles are, you know, that he's the problem. I think what's Listen. around him is a problem. You know, yes or no? Are you concerned about to his durability? That's the only thing I've ever been yes. concerned okay. about. Yes or from, no? From day one. From are day you one. concerned about to his arm strength? Zero. Okay. Zero. Number three. Are you concerned about his interception rate? Zero. Zero. <laughs> okay. He's supposed, it, dude. He's he's still he's playing his first sixteen games of his life. He's supposed to make mistakes. He's supposed to throw interceptions. That's what Peyton Manning does. That's what Trevor Lawrence does. You know, that, that's the way it goes. When you're Steve Young in Tampa, my brother, you look like dog shit. And then all of a sudden, you go to, you go to San Francisco, and you're with Bill Walsh and that, and that structure, and then all of a sudden, you look like a hell of a quarterback again like you did in the USFL. Structure around you is incredibly important. I don't care what kind of player you are, my friend. That's why Mahomes looked like dog shit last year in the Super Bowl. He looked like a fool last year. Why? Because he didn't have an offensive line. 
He may have the coordinator, he may have the weapons, but he didn't have the five guys in front of him to block. And that's the part that you're unwilling to be flexible, that you're not giving to a break on that, that he is playing with crap around him. And that's just, you know, when he was playing with good, good stuff around him in Alabama, coaches, structure, everything, he looked like a star. And here he does yeah, it. Yeah, but do, you don't you yourself. think that having wide receivers running wide open was a big part of his success? Yeah. And he doesn't yeah. have that and because nobody has that in the NFL. It's very rare. The, the throws that are required are different than the throws that were required at Alabama. And he admitted recently, I think after the last game, that there's a lot more complexity – Right to everything he's being asked to do, so it's he's, the NFL. Do you uh, need so he needs more time to get ramped up on the complexities. That's it. I and agree good. that he he will continue to improve. If you give does that mean that we already know he's the Dolphins' long term solution and franchise quarterback? Of course not. Right, no that that we don't know because they haven't made their, made up their mind yet. But if you give him, I believe if you give him the structure, he'll succeed. All right, uh, you picking him to win or not? I want to pick the Dolphins to win because I want to keep this seven and seven hopes alive. But after doing the research, I was good on my picks last week, by the way. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. I had the oh, Dolphins to cover. I was right. You're right. I, 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 I bet them. I bet them twice to cover uh, last right. week. Twice. Uh, so I have Carolina by six. Okay. I think the Dolphins have a chance to win it at the end, but I'm I'm, I'm thinking uh, the game ends on a on a sack fumble. Or a pick. Wow. Oh, okay. So, all right. <laughs> hate to bring up that negative thought there, but Jalen Phillips is trying to put positive. Well, if you if you nail that one, bro, I need the I need the lottery numbers next week. So I'm I, hoping I'm wrong. I do not want the game to end on a red zone sack fumble of Tua. All right. Well, we'll we'll see if uh, Tua and the boys can get it done. Follow him on Twitter at Shad Joe. Catch his work there at the Palm Beach Post, and you catch him twice a week here with the American Dream Lending Miami Dolphins Weekly Report. Joe, love you, brother. Have a great weekend. Happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy the food, baby. See you, bud. You got it. There you go. Joe Shad, the Tua hater. This is the